Buckeye Bushcraft back here again with another video, another gear video. I do a lot of gear videos, but people seem to like them. So this video is going to be on the equipment, new equipment that I have gotten. My Patu is coming up over here. New equipment that I have gotten over the past couple months that I'm going to be using in my overnight videos and that I've been using consistently for a few months now. Um, before we get started on this, I will say this gear is tailored towards me. All right, this is what I like. This is what works for me in my environment, my body type, skill level, all that stuff. Some of this stuff may not work for you or you may not like it, and that's fine, right? But I get a ton of comments all the time during these gear videos, people commenting down below why I shouldn't be using something, but I should be using something that they're using, right? And why what I'm using is wrong, okay? That's completely false. Um, use what works for you, all right? Um, I do gear videos to give people suggestions and maybe they'll make a change to their kit or something like that. Who knows? It may help somebody out. That's why I do them. Um, I don't do them to tell them to tell you what you should and should not be carrying because that's completely up to you and your environment. Um, so these are all just suggestions. This is what some of the stuff that I'm using, some of the, the newer gear that I'm using. This is not a pack loadout by any means. Um, this is just, you know, different products that I've been using and that I really, really like and I enjoy using. Um, and I have gone to using uh, exclusively now. Get the camera moved in here close, and we'll take a look at some gear. Okay, so I've got everything just kind of laid out right here. Again, <clears throat> we're just gonna kind of run through and I'm gonna show you guys some of the new equipment that I've got that I'm gonna be using. Again, like I said, because I'm gonna have a ton of questions in the overnight videos. So, figure we'll start with the biggest and work our way over. This pack is the Vertex 15 liter long walks pack. Sorry about the lighting, but it's evening. Really nothing I can do about it. The Vertex 15 liter long walks pack. This is a great pack. If you go on like a day hike, uh, you want to hike some trails, hike back into a wildlife area, do some fishing, something like that. This is an awesome pack. It's enough to have a small emergency kit in, maybe some fishing equipment, some snacks, water, things like that. The big, and one thing that I really like about it, this doesn't have the side pockets for your bottle. It's got this front, mesh portion to it you can just slide it in the front just like that okay so i'm a big fan of this pack um i've been using it for about eh, two months now probably and uh i like it a lot and two if you wanted to use it it's like a urban style pack it doesn't look very um tactical or anything like that it doesn't really draw a lot of attention to you it just looks like a normal backpack so uh, that's one thing i like about this it's a 500 denier which to be honest with you, it's just fine. Um, it's held up through briars and all that other stuff. I've had zero problems on this pack. And it keeps your kit nice and light because it's a smaller pack. So that is the backpack. Next. I will be completely honest with you. Grail sent me this for free. Okay. Usually whenever Grail comes out with something, they send it to me. So... This is the new Grail Titanium Geo Press, and by the time this video comes out, it'll probably be shipping their. They'll probably be shipping their first batch. Um, but as of right now, in this video, these are pre-order only, so you can only get these on a pre-order. But one thing I like about this, this has pretty much replaced my stainless steel or titanium bottle and cup set because I get everything in one small package. Okay. So, pull this thing out. It's got the titanium housing. And then it's got a one-way valve on the bottom to where you can add a drink mix to this. And then, of course, it has the actual body itself. is titanium, so you can use it to boil water with. It's got some nice bat wing handles on the back. They're nice and big. It's one thing I like about them because you can actually grab onto them. It's got a little D-ring where if you need to get water down lower, you just tie a piece of paracord to it and do it that way. But this right here has ultimately replaced my normal canteen and cup set. I have found that from my experience, I don't really need anything more than this. Um, usually if I do carry something extra, it's gonna be like a two quart military canteen. It's like the soft body. But as far as the filter goes, Everybody that asks me what filter they should get, I always recommend Grail. Are they expensive? Yes, 
this grail goes for like 220 bucks. I'm not saying it's cheap. I'm not saying it's for everybody. But if you can afford it and you can justify the purchase, I really recommend getting one of these because this thing is just, in my opinion, it's one of the best. Um, the Sawyers are pretty good too, but with this, I like just to be able to, you know, carry water over distance, all that good stuff. But, um, so yeah, I did get this for free, but then again, I have been using Grails for years. So it's really nothing new. This is the one water filter that I always stick with is usually a Grail. So it is 24 ounces. Usually you can get water. I think the press time is like eight to 10 seconds, something like that. So, and it's got a replaceable filter. Is it meant for 100,000 gallons? No. Am I gonna drink 100,000 gallons of water while I'm out in the woods? No. So I've noticed through Grail, usually a filter lasts me about a year and a half or so. And then I replace it, it's like 20, 30 bucks, no big deal, All right? So that is my water container. If it's really hot, I'll carry something extra, like a two quart canteen, like I said. Um, if you're worried about the filter failing or something like that, you always have the option to boil. And then you could go even farther and carry smaller, like water purification style tablets. Um, I usually keep just a small roll of them somewhere in my pack, just because you don't even really know that they're there. So usually I end up forgetting about them. All right, next up. So I am not one of those guys that likes fads. I like using stuff that nobody else uses. That's just me. I like, and once I find something that works for me, I normally don't shy away from it. Okay, I usually stick with it because it works for me. But again, like I said in the beginning of the video, what works for me may not work for you. So you gotta find out what works for you. But I messaged Jay Barry at Tough Possum and <clears throat> told him I'm looking to get some pouches. And he sent me a small box of pouches for free. And I liked them so much that I went and I made two more orders of pouches. So I've got like a few pouches on here. I probably have 20 pouches now. I was, I, I told him this, and I'll be honest with you, I never really bought them because everybody else was using them. But one of my buddies convinced me to get some. I was like, okay, I'll pull the trigger. And I did, and I'm glad I did. I have been missing out. If you don't have any tough possum pouches, you are seriously missing out. So first is this, just I think this is like an eight by 10 center zip pouch. You know, you could put a small kit in here but whatever, I usually put some shelter stuff and just some extra where I'll put like my fishing kit in it. This is just another small center zip pouch right here. I keep my headlamp with spare batteries in this. It's can't, it's, the camera's kind of far away, so sorry about that. But This right here, just a, I think this is called their pocket tool pouch. <clears throat> this one happens just to be in multi-cam. Uh, this is what I keep my camera batteries in, so. I've got three or four extra camera batteries in here. Um, usually if I'm doing an overnighter, I'll throw six in there. Then in this one, this is one I carry in my pocket every day, pocket tool pouch. This just has a, a small anchor brick inside of it and then a charging cable for my phone. So it keeps my phone and stuff charged up. So, but my favorite is gonna be between these two. I have one more in my pocket I forgot to lay out here. This right here is the belt pouch. It's got a couple little belt straps. I got mine in woodland camo. Um, I, I have one in orange also, but I just put a small 23 piece Wazoo adventure kit in this. You throw it in your pocket, throw it in your belt and you're good to go. But again, it's just another pouch. Um, and then this is probably my ultimate favorite is PSK pouch, personal survival kit pouch. Because if you have this combined with something like a let me see, let me grab it here real fast. Combined with like a T60 and then a grail, that's pretty much perfect for an emergency kit, in my opinion. So, well, it's got this nice big grab handle so you can throw it in a cargo pocket and pull, yank it out if you need to. It's orange, so if you drop it, you can see it. It's the most important thing. I'm in a little bit of an organizational freak when it comes to my pack. So I don't like a pack that has a ton of pockets stuff just to stuff stuff in. I like putting everything in pouches and usually I'll collar code everything. That way I know what I'm grabbing, okay? So I'm a big pouch guy. I've got a ton of these now. Um, I've got way more at the house. I just don't wanna lay them all out. So Tough Paws, some gear pouches, check them out. If you see me using any of these pouches, that's who they're from. Um, check them out, 
get a couple pouches and they're fairly cheap they're like between like i think 15 bucks and 30 for the pouches which is not bad i think these right here go for like 15 if i'm not mistaken another thing is i have realized that i don't need to carry a whole roll of number 36 bank line i don't even need number 36 bank line um this is number 12 bank line is it rated for half more than half of what number 36 bank line is yeah sure it def most definitely is but if you wrap something enough times it'll hold you up if i'm making a you know structural shelter and i'm going to be laying on like a raised bed or something like that instead of wrapping it once or twice with number 36 i'll just wrap it three or four times with this this is on a sagewood gear spool card i have 200 feet on this thing 200 feet of number 12 bank line versus 200 feet of number 36 would be almost half a roll so this is what i opted to carry in for my cordage again i'm trying to just size everything down make everything lighter um you know as you progress in this field and you gain more experience throughout time all that good stuff you realize what you do and what you don't need and you go through these phases of phasing other things out that you just don't use anymore all that so sagewood gear spool card with number 12 bank line now another thing from tub possum gear and i am a huge fan of this he makes two different versions of this this is just the regular version he also makes an xl but this is his survival scarf so i got mine od green of course it's od green on one side it's orange on the inside but it's sewn into a tube so this thing makes an awesome pillow um, i usually will just stuff like a jacket in there at the end of the night fold it up and i've got my pillow um, so this thing makes a great pillow you know it also makes an awesome signaling device because you can turn it inside out and you have this huge giant orange panel okay also where it is a tube stuff it full of sticks if you want to if you need to carry you know sticks to a location or something like that um but also the big one the xl which is like 72 inches long i don't i don't remember what this one was it's big enough to make a browse bed from and actually lay on it so i've got one of those on the way and the, that one's not cheap it's like 90 dollars. don't get me wrong it's not a cheap product but it's well worth the money this is since i usually will carry a small bandana in my pocket but this has replaced like the schmog in my kit and where it's tubular again i can also use this to filter water if i need to works good as a scarf face covering all that good stuff i mean anything that a normal piece of material would be good for so i'm a huge fan of this this is like a staple in my kit now this is one of those things where i have to have it so i'll go ahead and get this out of the way so i found this company on instagram this is called goon tape a lot of guys use it to wrap their weapons with, their ARs or their pistols or something like that. And I use it for knife blades or knife handles. Um, I'll show you guys this in just a second. But I got a couple different collars, but I wrap this handle with it. Makes it nice and uh, grippy. It's not super, super grippy like Wilson tape, like hockey tape. This is a little bit smoother, but I've noticed when it gets wet, it gets a little bit grippy. So... I just wrapped the handle my more garbird i'll probably wrap the handle my fishing rod with it just something extra it's pretty cheap i think for two rolls it's like 15 bucks um, and there's a lot on a roll but also what i've noticed with this past class this past weekend logan one of the guys that teaches with me ripped his pants off ripped his pants um towards the bottom on a piece of barbed wire so he took one of these pieces of goon tape put it on his pants and it didn't come off all weekend this stuff is extremely sticky whenever you put it on something. That is a good thing about it. So for gear repair, it works perfect, especially for like backpacks or tarps. Um, gorilla tape or regular duct tape, from what I've noticed, whenever it's wet or too cold, it won't stick. It just won't. This stuff will, but then again, this is a material, an actual material. This is one of those things where you're not going to be able to rip it off like a piece of duct tape and burn it or any of that. This is one of those items that you just keep at the house if you find something you want to wrap wrap it up this is what i use now so goon tape out of the way for knives now a 
again, personal experience is a huge, huge thing with all of this stuff, okay? This isn't a kit loadout that I carry every time. I'm just showing you guys all the different products that I have that I'm gonna be using in these videos. But as far as knives go, I've got this for a, just a small EDC. I kept seeing it on Instagram. This is the Station 9, number seven. It makes a good little EDC knife. Um, I like it because if I'm sitting in my car opening up packages or something like that, I can just yank it down and cut stuff open with. I got a small little button compass. I've got a little wazoo water kit on it with a ferro rod with just a piece of inner tubing around it just to hold it on. But this makes a great little like everyday carry neck knife. So I normally would just keep this on me. It's super concealable too. So you can tuck it behind your shirt and nobody even really knows. Now, my woods knife that I've been using daily since I got it, super consistently, haven't used any other knife, and it is quickly becoming my favorite because of the size and the profile. This is a LT Wright Knives Bush Baby. Okay, This is about a three inch blade, which for me is perfect. Some people like a five inch, some people like a six inch or a four inch. There's nothing wrong with that. I just prefer a little bit of a smaller blade because with my skill set, I find that's really all I need. Because with a nice leather sheath, um, I got this second hand. It's full tang. I think this is 01 Scandi Grind. Um, this is like a burlap micarta, I think. And then on the sheath, got a couple things just rubber banded to it. Um, a Wazoo water kit and then a small ferro rod. This also makes a great little neck carry. Some people don't like neck carry, some people do. I prefer a neck carry knife, specifically because I can do this and I don't have to worry about it slinging around everywhere, doing any of that. And if I need to take it off, I could just take it off. I am not worried about walking through the woods with a neck knife and choking myself. That is a, it would take an act of God for that to happen. So I'm not worried about that. <clears throat> The biggest complaint I have with neck knives is if you are walking through the woods, they swing everywhere. But what I normally do is I just tuck it behind my shirt or I just throw it on my backpack. Um, one of the two, if I'm on my own property, I'm not gonna get in an emergency survival situation on my own property. So I'm not worried about having my knife on my body. But I have found that a three inch blade works just fine for me in my skill set. I really don't need anything bigger for me. Anything bigger is really more of a hassle. And again, you may like a bigger knife. And usually in the summertime, I carry something like this in a machete uh, because I like to be able to clear a brush out of my way. But you may like a little bit of a bigger knife. You may like a four inch or five inch or a six inch. It's all completely based on your skill set, your body type, what you like, what you don't like. There is no rule that it has to be six inches long. That's stupid, okay? Use what you're comfortable with and what you know you can get away with. So that's my knife. Um, this is probably the only knife I'll be using for a really long time. Um, but next, this is probably one of my favorite things because summertime rolls around. I'm all the time walking through the woods, trying to hit ponds and do some fishing. So I'm really excited about this. Everybody knows that I am a huge fan of the pocket fishing kit, the hand reel. This thing works awesome for like an emergency kit and they're also just really fun. I don't like the circular style like this, that you have to like point it in a certain direction and throw it. I don't like that. Um, I don't think they spool off near as well as something like this does. This is smaller, it's more compact. And they just don't spool off whenever you go to cast it like the more tubular style does. You can even use like a Gatorade mix um, container, something like that, and it works just fine. So I prefer something like this over like an actual like hand reel, I guess you could call it, that's actually in a real shape. I don't like those at all. Um, I just think for a beginner, um, they can be somewhat of a hassle versus something like this, okay? But for me, it's just all personal preference. This bag, I've just got some different baits and stuff for bass and if you're not uh, throwing any yum dingers or venoms, you're wrong. Nah, I'm just kidding. So, I'm always, I always carried my pocket fishing kit in case I wanted to hit a pond. Now, I ended up getting something off Amazon from a company called Daiwa. Daiwa used to make a rod and reel combo called a mini spin. 
And this is not called the mini spin anymore. This is called something else. It's like, a, uh, what is it, like their travel kit or something like that. But it is a fishing rod and reel combo. So it's a rod that's got, I think, four or five different pieces and parts. Just throw it together real quick. And then you end up having like a six foot rod. Just like that, okay? Just make sure your eyes are lined up, all that good stuff. And then of course you put your little reel at the bottom. And this isn't a huge reel. This is a nice little spinning reel. As you can see. Just stick it on the bottom. Ah, if I can get it, if I can hold it there. Just like that, and then boom, you're ready to fish. So like, I'm a huge fan of this, and I'm really excited about this because there's a lot of ponds and streams and things like that around where I live. So I'm able to hit them and actually fish for a particular, you know, species of fish versus just throwing a pocket kit out there and trying to see just what I could get. So I could bass fish with this, I could fish for bluegill, I could fish for crappie. So this is something that I'm really excited about. It's nice and compact. And it doesn't cost too much money. I think this thing was only like, if I had to guess, I think it was like 80 bucks for the combo. And then what I do is I'll just take a couple rubber bands just to keep it from rattling around in my pack. Take it around the poles a couple times. A nice little like sleeve that this could slide down in would be perfect. So if anybody knows of a sleeve that I could use to slide this down into, that's just like a um, soft material sleeve, not a hard sleeve. Let me know in the comments below. But this makes a perfect little rod and reel combo. I usually just throw the reel in this little mesh bag just to kind of keep it protected. I've got a little tackle box here. It's got some different crankbaits. It's got stuff to fish for panfish. Um, I've got hooks, lures, sinkers, bobbers, um, crankbaits, uh, spinner baits. Um, rooster tails did I mean you name it just this small little um tackle box does it just perfect so like this right here for me yes size comparison to the pocket fishing kit it's a lot bigger but if i carry you know these items right here like this that's a pretty good food getting kit um and here's the thing like you don't have to look at everything as from a survival standpoint. If I just want to go hike through the woods and go hit some fishing or go hit some ponds and try out some different things with fishing equipment, I'm going to carry this because I'm out there to fish. So, but something like this, you could fit in this pouch right here. I don't know if I can get the reel in there. It might be kind of stretching and I might be able to. I don't know. That's going to be pretty. No, uh, maybe. No, that's pretty tight with the reel. I have to get a little bit of a bigger pouch for that. Maybe. Hold on, I might be able to. Yeah, a little bit of a bigger pouch. But even with this, I can use this, carry all my fishing tackle in, have these two things just sitting on the top of my pack. And then whenever I go to fish, I can just pull them out, put them together, rig it up, and go fishing. Usually with this, I'll just slide it in the front of this pack right here, just like that, and it does just fine. So nice little ultralight, or kind of ultralight, compact fishing setup to catch any fish that I want to catch. Um, obviously, I'm not going to pull in a 50-pound catfish with it, but if I want to do some bass fishing or something like that, I can have some fun with it. All right, just to recap real quick, Vertex backpack, 15-liter long walks pack, Grail Titanium Geo Press, Tough Possum awesome Gear Stuff, Tough Possum awesome Gear Survival Scarf, Sagewood Gear Spool Card, the Station 9 Number 7, for just an everyday carry knife, the LT Wright Knives Bush Baby. Again, I know I'm going to get a lot of flack about the size of this thing, but this thing right here is perfect for me and what I do.
that I've been looking for a knife like this for a really long time and I finally found it. Compact fishing kit, goon tape, and I think that's it. So this is, like I said, some of the new equipment you're gonna see in my videos. If you ask what something is, I'm just gonna reply with a link to this video because it's a lot easier than that. I can't reply to all comments, I just can't do it, okay? So, I'll put some links to some of this stuff in the description box below. Um, FYI, I don't make money off of any of this stuff if you go buy it. So, this is all stuff that I have bought myself besides some of the tub possum stuff and the grail. Everything else I bought, okay? Um, I'm not paid by anybody to do these reviews or anything like that. What I'm moving towards now, um, you know, I'm not into the wool blanket carry and stuff like that anymore. The, 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 um, canvas tarps or oil skin tarps. And if that's your style, there's no problem with that. It's what you like. I'm just not a fan of it anymore. Right? There's nothing wrong with it. The gear works great. It's just heavy. I don't like carrying a big backpack around. So hopefully you guys like this video. Again, I just wanted to shoot this just to kind of get it out there, what I'm using, things like that. That way I don't have a ton of people asking me in the comment sections in my overnight videos. This is what works for me, okay? Again, it may not work for you, and that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, if you like the more traditional stuff, go for it. But I'm moving more into the modern style stuff because it's what I like. This is an E-type of training, training with Sean Kelly from Corporal's Corner, me. I've got a few different classes up on the website, so you can check out BuckeyeBushcraft.com, sign up for a class. We have a May Modern Survival Skills class coming up. Um, here in about a month or so, and I think there's only five spots left on that one. So if you've been looking to train, you better get on it because they're going to be gone pretty quick. So I've got over 20 in that class so far. Um, and then I've got a firecraft workshop class, and I've got a primitive trapping class in the fall. That's really all I put up for right now. So if you're interested in training, BuckeyeBushcraft.com. I'll leave a link in the description box below. Overnight videos are coming now every Saturday. Um, they will be dropping by 6 p.m., if I have one that drops after, it's because I've got crappy internet. So that's all right. Don't pay any mind to it. Um, but I've got some crappy internet that I'm trying to work with. And sometimes it takes a lot longer to post than it normally should. So just keep that in mind. But I'm Jake Trent with Buckeye Bushcraft. Thank you guys for joining me. See you next time.